Hi, my name is Mike Piquel. I'm based out of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada at the University of Ottawa. And we're here today to demonstrate all inside ACL, but our first step is graft prep. So this is the typical graft prep that you would see for an all inside ACL. We've got our semitendinosus tendon here that we've harvested and ready to go. We've got our tensioning device where we're gonna secure our buttons on. We've got our tibial sided button. So this is an adjustable loop tibial button that comes without a button. We'll attach our button at a later date. We've got our femoral sided button that has the button already secured to it. This is an adjustable loop as well. And here we've got one that's been detached and you can see one of the nice features in this system is it's got this blue tab, which allows us to decrease or pull the button back if we've over tensioned our graft in any way. So we can loosen it and that's new to this system. We have our looped stitch. This is gonna be what we use to secure our graft. And then we've got just a standard hi-fi number two stitch. This is gonna be our bailing stitch. So it'll make more sense in a second here. So the first thing we do is we're gonna attach our buttons to our system. So we're gonna attach our femoral button here, ready to go our tibial button, we're gonna to attach to the tensioning device. I like to use one that has a spring-loaded tensioning device so we can put our graft under tension at the end. Here we have our two buttons ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is trim down our tendon. So the ideal length is around 270 millimeters. So this graft right now is about 20, 29 centimeters or 290. So we're gonna trim that down to somewhere around that 27 mark. Doesn't have to be exact, but it's gonna help with our final graft length. One of the things we want is to be sure that our graft length is around 65 millimeters in total length, and that's gonna help ensure that we don't have any graft issues when we're putting our tendon into our ACL sockets. Once we've got our graft, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna loop it through one end of our button system. So now we've got our graft through our loop with one end on either side. There's a whole bunch of ways that we can do this. Next part, this is my system for doing it, but essentially we're trying to turn this into a four strand graft. So for me, I put one end of the tendon through the loop of the femoral button, and then I pass the other end of the tendon through the loop in the opposite direction. So we've got one going one way, one going the other way. That's gonna add friction to our system and give us a more secure and robust fixation. Once we've done that, then you have to pass one side of our tendon through the center of our graft. So we're just gonna pass that through the center of our graft and now we've got both tails on the same side of the graft. We match up our ends and put a clamp on to secure them. And now we've got the beginnings of our graft. The next thing we're gonna do is take our looped suture and we're gonna pass the two ends through the loop. That's gonna start our securing of the graft. And then it's as simple as passing a whip stitch up and down. So we're gonna pass through both ends of the graft, retrieving it from the other side. And there's our first secure loop pass the snap through the loop, and this is how we make our whip stitch. So then we just continue that process all the way up the graft. Usually I like about four to five passes. I think that's plenty. You don't need to cover the entire length of the, of the graft with these sutures. It's really just to hold the ends together. So we've got kind of two more passes here, and then we should be good to go. One and one final pass, and there we go. The key to this is you wanna make sure you're getting both tendon ends so that we're actually creating a whip stitch. So once we've done that, we're just gonna cut the needle off of this. So then we've got two free ends and there's our graft kind of tied together now. The next step is to pass one limb of our two suture ends back through the center of this graft. So now we've got a tail on either side, as you can see here, and we're gonna increase our graft length. And this is where we wanna get it dialed in to about 65 millimeters. So by doing this and having it in between here, you can see our graft is getting tucked into the middle we then wanna bring the two tails right to the tip of the tendon. So we're gonna be about there. And if we then measure that, it should be about 65 millimeters and we're bang on. So that's kind of what our final construct is gonna look like. So the key here is we wanna make sure we keep the end of these tails sitting right against the crux of the rest of the tendon. That's what our final product's gonna look like. Next thing we have to do is secure this. And I use what's called a bailing stitch. Again, there's a few ways you can throw this. The key is we wanna make sure we get all four limbs of the tendon with each pass of our suture and that's gonna provide us our security. So here we've got our inner strands and we've got our two outer strands. I like to throw four, so I throw one at 10 millimeters and 20 millimeters from each end and those are our four bailing stitches. So starting from this end, we'll pass one through the inner tendon, which is this tendon here, to the outer tendon, which is that there. So we've got two ends of our tendon now secured with that stitch. I pull the stitch through and then I loop it back on itself and this is the bailing portion of the stitch. So I'm now wrapping it around the entirety of that tendon and back around. So we've got it looped all the way around that tendon. And now I'm gonna go from the outside of the tendon on the opposite side to the inside of the tendon 
on the opposite side. So now I've got all four strands of tendon secured with the single stitch. And as we tighten this down, you'll see that it creates a nice secure stitch. So there's our, what our stitch is gonna look like. We've got it wrapped right around that tendon. It's grabbing all four limbs, and then we simply tie it together, and that's our first securing stitch done. I like to try and bury the knots, so I just cut one end of the suture off there, and then pass the stitch back through, beside the knot coming out anywhere, and this is just going to help dunk our knot into the tendon and keep things just a little bit cleaner. So there's one bailing stitch done, and then we just re repeat that process once more here and twice on this side. So again, inside to outside, grabbing two tendons, wrap it around the tendon, outside tendon to inside tendon, again, securing the other two limbs of the tendon. There's our second stitch done. One of the holdups from doing this technique is often the graft prep. It's seen as being a little bit more difficult, but as you get doing them, you'll find that it really doesn't take any longer than a standard graft prep, and I think leaves you with a nice consistent graft. The benefits to this graft preparation technique is we're only harvesting one tendon, so we're only harvesting the semitendinosus tendon. The semitendinosus tendon is the bigger of the two tendons, so we've got semi-T and gracilis. By a quadruple wrapping that semitendinosus tendon, we're actually consistently having a larger graft than we would if we were using the double strand of gracilis and the double strand of semitendinosus. So we're actually ending up with a more consistently large graft, which as we know is important to prevent ACL failures. So there's our third stitch done. Try and make it so the bailing stitch ends up nice and compact. There's our third stitch. So we'll repeat that one more time. Far end, again, we're going from inside to outside, wrapping it around one last time. And then again, from outside to inside. There we go. Tension it. And then tie it off. And there's our final product. So then the last thing I do, once I've passed all of my suture limbs, is I'll just put it under tension. So I like to put it under a little consistent tension. It'll take any creep out of the system. It'll make it a more reliable graft that doesn't have any excess stretch in it when we go to implant it. And then one final step that I think is important for all inside is to mark our ends so we know when we've dunked our tendon into the socket. So I just put a little mark about 20 millimeters from either end, and that's gonna help us when we're putting our graft into the sockets at the end of the case. So there it is marked. There's our final graft. And we just take our sizer so we decide on our tunnel size. We think this one's probably gonna be about a 9.5, and it's actually more like a 10. So we've got a nice big graft from a single tendon harvest that's more consistently around a nine and a half or 10 because we're taking that larger tendon. But there's our final graft product. <laughs>